Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous and today I'm going to bring you into the magical world of RSI's brand new updated and improved and beautiful version of the Constellation Phoenix and like something that's rising out of the ashes and becoming beautiful and new. Yeah, okay. So Josh Coons did an amazing job on the Phoenix, and I was able to shake his hands and thank him at CitizenCon because the Constellation Phoenix has been something that I've been kind of in love with since the day I heard the concept. But in reality, what I got the first time was something more akin to uh, Woody Allen's... Well, let's just say a Woody Allen movie. It, it was... It was just bright, white, diffused, and meh. And I really never got the feeling that it was well thought out. And it probably wasn't in the beginning. Not saying that they gave us a half-assed ship. I'm just saying that there are so many new systems and so many more designers and so many more ideas that are in the game that are bringing them more in line with design that would almost be what you would have in real life. And I'm going to say that because I still believe these ships are beautiful for the game but lack practicality most of the time when we're flying them around. Now, I am extremely happy with this ship, so we're not going to rip it apart. But there are some issues, and I'll point them out in a little bit. But to get where we are today, we have to talk about how I got to my Phoenix. And I got to my Phoenix in a way that was the beginning of my addiction to buying ships. And it was right after Scott Manley did a video about Chris Roberts and how he did Wing Commander and then now he was a star citizen. And I was looking at it like, oh, is he Richard Branson? Is he Elon Musk? Who is this guy? Is he trying to like go to space now instead of make video games? And I didn't really know what was going on. And then Gamescom 2013 was coming up and I heard Hangar Module walk around your own ship and I was... Oh boy, I got to go see what this is. And as soon as that Gamescom presentation was over, I was hitting the buy button on an Aurora. The day the hangar module went online, I was sold. Now, in the beginning, I was sold mainly because I saw Squadron 42 was coming out. And that was my most important thing that CIG was going to be doing. But little by little, I started to fall in love with the ships. And I got into this craze of buying a ship, melting it, then using the funds to buy the next ship in line, and then melting it, and then using the funds to buy the next ship in line. Always adding a little bit more of my money until I got to the Constellation. I did a video walking around the Constellation. I think it might still be up in my very, very early days, and I was just floored by it because it was such a beautiful ship. I've never seen anything like it in a game before. And then... They came out with the Phoenix and the Hartwell um, music piano. And all I can think was, holy cow, this is the ship I have to have. I could have my org events here. I could have parties. And of course, bigger and bigger ships have been offered since. And I looked at it like this could be the Queens because in our organization, the Enabler, we have... A mixture of different ranks, and I'm the queen, and though I don't rule like a monarch, I rule more like uh, King Arthur with the round table, always going to my lieutenants or my peers to help me with major decisions, like buying a Kraken or not, and we'll talk about that later. But I got to that point where I just had to have that ship, and I loved it, and I... Well, sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent. Anyway... They delivered the Phoenix, and I already told you, it was like, meh. But I never really wanted to melt it because I knew that the Constellation was Chris's baby. And I knew that one day it would be updated, and it was. It was updated quite a number of times. 
When the Phoenix was handed to Josh Coons, I knew something incredible was going to be given to us. Josh is amazing with the designs that he creates. And I never liked the Cutlass until Josh was done designing the Cutlass. And whatever Josh's next ship is, is surely going to be right in my fleet because he's just amazing at his designs. Again, that doesn't mean that the designs don't have flaws. It just means the designs are gorgeous and have few flaws. My major flaw with this ship is the canopy right now with that stupid bar right in front of me. But as many times as I think about how I would redesign it, I come back to, I just have to suck it up because it looks cool. My second issue with this ship is honestly this cockpit. It's a ton of wasted space and it really needs to have some kind of, uh, let's see, some kind of other stations or other places going on, seats for other people to sit up here. There really is a lot of missing, you know, there's a lot of empty space that I don't believe a real spaceship would have. I think if we're building a spaceship, every square inch is going to be used for something, not just this big empty area over here, but nonetheless, that's it. As soon as I leave this space, I really shut up. I don't have any issues. But I'm seeing, as I'm walking through here, there are things on the side walls over here. You do have shields, or well, the front shields, because this ship has multiple shields and multiple positions for other systems. But then I come back here into the midsection. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> I think when I was shooting this, I was really stuck there. And this midsection is made awesome with this great storage, right? You have storage everywhere. We got some over here. The way that the table comes out of the floor and then goes back out of the way when you want to stow it. I mean, it is just an amazingly well thought out area. And I love it. And I know it's common to all the constellations. And that's another thing I like. I like that the constellations don't change everything. They just change that rear area. Pretty fun. Well, until you get to the Kilo, but that's just pretty much a different canopy and different turret setup. But even those wonderful beds and escape pods are awesome. Now, Josh talked about using this emblem up here, which is actually the Constellation Phoenix, which makes a lot of sense. So I think when you walk in a Taurus, somewhere there has to be a Constellation Taurus emblem. I mean, that would just make sense, right? The details, the textures that are used in this ship are just beautiful. Instead of being this white glowing thing that overpowers you and blinds you, it's very well done. The fact that there's three staterooms in this, what I'm going to call, large-sized corporate jet, because it's more like a corporate jet and a, and a yacht that are mixed together. But the staterooms are very, very practical. And I feel this is something that you would have on a spaceship. Just the bed. I think that there would be an area where you can actually have a seat that comes out of the wall or maybe a dresser that comes out of the wall. Storage for clothes and items like that. But it's a game. It's not real life. In real life, those are things that we might see in there. Hitting buttons right now, the, the ship is still getting polished. So there are going to be some things that work, some things that don't. And the game has a few sync issues. So we had that, that issue of opening and closing doors. But that second stateroom, just like the first, and now we have to find a way to close the door, and we do. In this area, nice little area for two people to sit down, look outside, see what's going on. I love yellow. Yellow with those beautiful rings that are revolving or rotating. or <laughs> These beautiful rings that go around it are awesome. Let's sit in the seat. Let's take a look around. Yeah, this is a great area. And I could almost imagine that there'd be some noise dampening that's going on. So when you're sitting here, you could have a conversation. And that conversation won't be able to be overheard in the rest of the ship. I kind of hope that. The bar is amazing. I love that it's against the wall, something they didn't do in the 600, which would have been amazing 
because it would have opened up the space where the bar is to some other crazy ideas like maybe a dance floor or some seating or a lot more. It's pretty cool, right? Lots of alcohol. You can tell in my ship there's going to be parties because I've got a well-stocked bar. So any of you could come on anytime. Now, this area is kind of done well. I think it is done really well. And I think that there should be opportunity to trade out for some seats right in front of the bar and make some other areas over there. So we're going to go back over here, take a look. And we have this area over here, which looks like it's an area that you can have gaming. Now, because of the way a video game works, not real life, you have some issues over here with this, with, with this table being so far away. And I think they could have made things a little bit easier here with these seats moving forward after you sat down. Because right now, that table so far away from me, I'm not going to be able to place or pick up a drink or pick up cards or do anything. Again, it's a game. I don't know if that's going to be important later on. I guess it would be. Otherwise, they're not going to put a deck of cards on the table. So there's a little bit more that could be done here. But I think if they're worried about being able to get around and get to the table, they should actually move the chairs forward a little bit after you sit down. This area is done very well. I'm loving the, I guess I'm going to call it the conference table. Because it's built more like a business conference table than it is a table that you would have your friends at to have a meal. And of course, that's one thing that is missing from this game, unless it's all being cooked in the crew quarters. There's no place to cook a meal. The hot tub doesn't work. Oh, well. But some stations back here where the midship, I think this is the midship shield generators. I think there's a shield generator in the front, two in the back. I'm not sure. There's just wild things going on, and this is going to be very important later on. Maybe we have some extras stowed down in the cargo hold. Yeah, we got this. Pretty awesome. All right, so we come over here to the stateroom for whoever is the VIP on the ship or the captain, one or the other. I will say try not to stand on the bed. I think they might have fixed that, but if you do, you'll find yourself clipping through the ceiling. I think this room is done extremely well. I like the size of it. Again, some stuff on the walls, a plant in a corner, um, maybe some storage units that come out of the side walls or flip down over here. Maybe a shelf to put some knickknacks on, just to give it a more homey feel. And this frosted glass is just amazing how they actually captured it in the game. I think it's wonderful. Uh, when you do go on a Phoenix, please do look in that wonderful fish tank. Because the old Phoenix model is at the bottom of it. You know how you always have a shipwreck in a fish tank? Well, in this case, they put a fish tank a uh, shipwreck of the constellation in the fish tank. This area, I think, is done extremely well. You have to have enough room to actually maneuver to the P-72 Archimedes. So you do have a gravity generator here, which I would expect for the size of the ship. There's where the Archimedes will be later on. Right now it's a Merlin. Can't wait to see the Archimedes. It's going to be awesome. All right, and uh, I would caution a bit against going out into that area in the back. Now, this is one of my most um, favorite features of it, and it's the lift that takes you down to the cargo bay, which actually is pretty cool. But we will show you something about this in just a little bit. So the cargo bay to me is pretty amazing, but we do have that wireframe issue, or whatever you want to call it, where maybe a level detail issue, where the minute you go down, maybe it's a lighting issue. I'm not sure what it is, but you can see the different structure of the sh you know different structures of the ship and how they're made up in the graphic polygons well here we are we went out and we got a lynx um not a lynx an ursa because the lynx isn't in the game yet and we're going to park it over here and uh i'm going to try to get it as close to perfect as i can and then we're going to go take it somewhere and this is an important part of it because 
You're supposed to be able to carry a luxury rover on this vehicle, but the minute you do, the, the absolute minute that you do, there's no room for anything else. This is not a 600 where you're going to have a lot of space to put some cargo in many different areas on the ship after you put your rover in it. And there is, I'm, I'm telling you, there's limited space over here. I don't know where you would put more cargo, maybe on the side somewhere. I'm not sure. But there should be areas for cargo storage if you're going to go on long trips. And there will be long trips. And you're going to need to eat and you're going to need to drink. And maybe those are things that they're going to model. Maybe they're not. Maybe there's storage places here to put all that stuff. I'm not certain. Nonetheless, it was a really tight fit. So we're going to go back to the wonderful cockpit, which I really do like. And this time, which you didn't get to see the first time, I'm going to sit in the middle seat. Because I did sit in the right seat before, but literally the right seat. And you can't turn the ship on or fly it from that seat as of yet. So here we are. I took the Phoenix to Damar. And of course, where else would you take a wonderful cargo of a RSI Ursa, but to Damar to take part in the Damar Rally. But that's not what we're doing here. We're just on Damar because I like Damar's atmospheric look. I love the more Earth-like environment, even though it's more like the Sahara or the Mojave or Death Valley or, you know, it's more like a desert. But I love it. And I think it's a great place to take your Ursa. So I have opened all of the bays, so I'm going to close up the elevator over here, and we're going to walk through my favorite area on the ship. Yes, right here. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. We're going to get to the lift. We're going to have to play that game again with getting it just right. And this is something that definitely will be corrected by the time 3.3 is out. Like I said, there's a lot of polishing going on. 3.3 was a huge endeavor. And I'm happy that they're taking their time with it. We're going to just jump down to the Ursa. And the Ursa moved. I mean, it moved a lot. Thank God that uh, it didn't cause any damage to the ship when it did. Close the door. And we're going to go take the Ursa out and take a look at it. So I think I'm pretty much done with this review of the Phoenix. I love it. I think it's wonderful. I think it's beautiful. And I'm going to let you watch as I talk to you about some other things. First off, thank you, Chain Crow. I know that many people showed up last night because, you know, it's October. Everybody is excited about next month's wonderful sale. Okay. We always have an anniversary sale. Oh, that is such a great look. And uh, Atlanta Bar Citizen was not a bust. It was just a week showing yesterday. And I had a great time, Chain Crow. Thank you. To all of those that watch my videos, thank you very much, and I really appreciate it. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please put them in the comment section. I've been answering those comments as often as I can lately because you all matter. And if you do like the video, be sure to click the thumbs up button. If you want to help out the channel a little bit more, subscribe, click the notification button, and you'll be notified of all all of those wonderful videos I'll be putting out in the future. And for those of you that want to go even one extra step, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl. At Patreon.com, you could support the artist of your choosing with donations as little as $1 a month. It's pretty cool, right? $1 a month. Wow. And with that $1 a month donation, those wonderful artists have a lot of benefits and here at Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous we have a discord channel where we get to chit chat and shoot the breeze and talk about things that are always Star Citizen and with that said folks you are all amazing and wonderful and kind and I love you all and with that said you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon bye